All right, we're going to get going. So, um, numbers a little bit sparse today because we have a competing training going on right now. That there's a national trainer that uh, our company supports in town doing a training, and so uh, we got a lot of people that are there. So, um, but the important ones are here, right? So I'm glad you're here. So, um, we're, what we're going to be talking about today is lead generation and. Um, most of you, I think, are very, very new or not even licensed yet, right? <laughs> so um, this is good because what one of the things you probably have noticed as you completed real estate school or, or are close to completing is that did they teach you how to sell real estate? What did they teach you in class? The laws of real estate, right? Yeah, how to pass the test, yeah, right? Yeah. Essentially, it was this is how you're going to pass the test. And I remember, so so let me kind of give you a little bit of my background as well. So um, I have had my license for 23 years now. I, I've been licensed for 23 years. I um, started and, and I remember as a new agent going to my broker and saying to my broker, uh, so what do you want me to do? Like, because I had finished school and similar to where you, what you have noticed is I got done with school and realized like they didn't really teach me how to do anything. And so I remember I went to my broker and I said, so tell me what to do. And uh, he said, okay, well, first thing is go make a list of everyone you know and then go contact them. And so I did and mailed them a, hey, I've started real estate, got my real estate license, which I think is a good idea to do if you haven't done. But after I had done that, then I said, okay, now what should I do? And he said, well, um, you know, really just go knock on some doors. And I said, okay. So I went out and started knocking on doors and knocked on doors for a few years and uh, and got my business uh, started. But but I wish I would have had what I'm going to teach you guys in today because I think it would have helped me get going quicker. Meaning it took me about 18 months of after I got my license before I felt like, okay, I know what I'm doing and, and I feel like I could actually make a living at this. And, and so hopefully... What I'm going to share with you today will shorten that learning curve is, is really kind of the idea. And so d continuing on giving you a little bit more of my background. So in 2004, so what, four or 15 years ago, I had left the company that I was with and gone to a different company and I quit doing everything that I had been trained in. And so I had uh, about a year and a half later went back to that company and I got involved in the training program that they were doing because I had quit doing everything that they were training me to do. And so I said, I want to make sure that I know what I'm doing. And so I went to the person who was in charge of the training program and I said, I want to come help out with the training. And she said, okay, great. So I started helping out with the training and then four months later she said, I'm quitting, do you want my job? Well, at that time I was doing really well in real estate. In fact, at the office that I was in, I was the top agent in my office. and. I was like, well, no, like, I don't want to take a cut in pay to go do training. And, and my wife convinced me, actually, to, I think you should do it. And it's, so I agreed, not telling the company, but told her, I'll do it for a year. But then at the end of the year, I'm not doing it anymore. And so I started doing it. And at the end of the year, I said, well, when it's not fun, I won't train anymore. And I'm still here. So... I'm still training. So that's a little bit of the background of me. But but my objective, I guess if you were to look at it, and if you thought about how, what, and I'm going to use this twice, but if you looked at this as being the learning curve and the process that you go through to get a real estate career up and running, it's going to look something like this, meaning you'll do a bunch of work for a, for a month or two, and, and Brandon, maybe you can vouch, because how long you had your license now? Uh, just over a year. Just over a year, yeah. So you can maybe vouch for this. I don't know for sure what happened. But typically what happens is the first few months or month or two, you work really hard, but nothing happens. And you kind of go, oh, okay, well, now, so for you, not so much, though. Jennifer started how long ago? Um, like 45 weeks. And she's already had her first closing. Like, she, we don't, we're, we make her sit in the back for that reason. So I'm just teasing. So... <laughs> Just a grand entrance. We all yes. know you're here now, right? So, um, 
anyway, this is a pretty normal thing of what it's going to look like, is that you feel like, hey, I'm working really hard, but not much is going on. But then what's going to happen is then it all of a sudden will take off for you, and things start to really get going and rolling very quickly. And so my objective, typically for most agents, and, and so when I say for most agents, what I'm referring to is, is the failure rate for real estate agents across the country, any idea what it is? I would imagine pretty big. 85 Yeah, so and now you guys that are not licensed yet, the few that are here, don't let this scare you. But 13 out of 14 that start will not see two years. They'll be gone within two years, 13 out of 14. And so the reason for that is twofold. One is is they don't get the training that they need to get up and running is, is, is probably the biggest piece. But the other is is that typically this learning curve for, for the uh, across the country, so this doesn't necessarily apply to what we're going to talk about today, but across the country, it's going to take somewhere between 18 months and two years before somebody typically really gets going. So my objective and what we're going to talk about today is to shorten that learning curve. It's to have this help you get things up and running quicker or for those that are, are, you know, like Brandon that's been here for a little bit, is just to help increase the efficiency of what you are doing with your prospecting. So my goal, though, is to shorten this learning curve to where you can get up and running faster if you'll do the things that we're going to talk about. So, so here's where I want to talk about. When you decided to become a real estate agent, what really were you deciding to do? Now, I know that's a little bit of a vague question, but... But what, if you had to sum it up in one word, what is it that you were really signing up to become an agent to do what? I want to help people find their homes, their houses. Okay, where good. Where they're going to be established. Okay, good. I like it. What other thoughts? If you had to put it in one word, what would you call it? Growth. Growth. Okay, good. I like it. Yeah. Any other thoughts? Lifestyle. Lifestyle? Okay, say more about that. What do you mean? Now, notice I didn't pick on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, right? <laughs> well, the front row is usually the top producer, so. <laughs> so, when you say lifestyle, what do you mean by that? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. It's just, you know, it was time to change. Okay. The lifestyle. Okay, got you. Good. I think it's a service industry, but not in the, but in the public sector, not in, I mean, in the private sector, not in the public sector. Okay, good. I like it. How about leadership? Really, at the end of the day, really what you guys were talking about is your job really becomes to lead people through a process. Because the only reason that someone comes to you as a real estate agent is really they need your leadership. They need somebody to be able to walk them through the process. And in fact, I'm going to show you here in just a little bit. NAR does a survey. So NAR, National Association of Realtors, does a survey every year of home buyers and sellers. And the number one thing that, that they go onto the internet and search for, what do you think the number one thing they go and search for is? Homes. Yeah, homes is number one. But, but what's the number two? Any idea what number two most search for, for from a home buyer or a seller? But in particular, let's talk from buyers for a minute. What are they searching for? Puppies. Right. So what? Puppies. Puppies. No, in terms of real estate. <laughs> so the first thing they go on to search for is houses. But this, what would be the second thing in terms of real estate that they go to search? Agents. It's not need... agents, actually. Oh, do I was going to say, do I need an agent? But... It's close to that. It's actually what are the steps that are involved in the home buying process? Mortgage. Mm -hmm. Actually, that is number three. Okay. Now, the number two is... What are the steps that are involved? Which is really another way of saying what? I need leadership. I need somebody to show me what to do to go buy a house. So because of that, because of that, your job really, if we were to sum it up, your job as a real estate agent is to become a leader. It is to lead people through the process to help them accomplish whatever it is that they're wanting to do. Now, with that being said, so think of that as like the, um, the umbrella or an envelope that you're going to cover things with. But so so let's put the leadership aside for just a minute. What really becomes your job then as an agent? Now I know this is still a little vague. Educate. 
Okay, good. I love that. Educate. What else? Walk them through the steps. Okay, good. Help them through the process. Perfect. Now, if, but in order to do that, what, what do you have to do? So, you have to make them feel comfortable and gain their trust. Okay, and, but even to get that to happen, what do you have to do? You have to know that they're... They're, well, they're, they're looking to do it. Like, you have oh, okay, to find someone Thank you. That need, someone Thank that you. Need. At the end of the day, your job is leadership. But in order for you to lead people, you first have to find, find, find somebody that needs, that needs it, right? you got to find them first, right? So your first thing in your job as an agent, and your number one, really, probably, if I were to sum it up, is your number one job is you've got to do something that we call prospect. Or said another way, your, your job is going to become, i got to find people that want to buy or sell a home. So how are you going to do that? Because this class is all about lead generation. So we're going to talk about how you generate leads, and we're going to talk about a number of different ways to do it. But more important, we're going to talk about how to do it effectively. But your job becomes, i got to go find people. So how are you going to find them? Online. Okay. Social media. And, uh, okay. Opportunities. I, I came home from... I came home yesterday, my son was there with his friend, and, and I just said I was going to be in the evening. He's like, oh, I'm looking to sell my house. And he's like, well, how was the process? I just got into a class last week about it. So it's like at any time, like you can just sometimes call in your lap. Yeah. Perfect. So Love it. That, and in fact, here's what I will tell you that I learned is if you will just in your day-to-day -day interactions, like meaning you go to a store, you go to a fast food place, doesn't matter. If you will just talk to people, what you will find is you'll come up with leads a lot easier just doing your day-to-day -day stuff and meaning like let me give you and I'm not necessarily recommending this but let me <laughs> show you what I did so let's assume this is my business card here. so what I would do is let's say so you you said you had worked at Arctic Circle so right. if I'm at Arctic Circle and I just ordered a hamburger one of the things I always always would do is I would say, hey, will you do me a favor? Now, so let's do a role play. So sure. assume you're at work. Right. I've just finished the order and paid. Okay. And I go, oh, hey, will you do me a favor? Sure. Will you just hold on to my business card? And if you hear of anybody thinking of buying or selling anywhere, give me a call. Absolutely. So no, now notice if... You're not going to tell people no. <laughs> right. Well, and why? It's rude. For starters, and then but, too, it might be helpful in the future. You never know. Yet, if I it, yet now let's fast forward. You're home from work. You just got finished working. You're tired, and I come and knock on your door. How do you treat me? Right. Like and for real. Like, Go away. I'm not even answering the door right now. Yeah, and, but and if you do, typically, what? How are you going to respond to me? Just, I don't know, be like, no, thank you. Yeah, yet, uh, Take notice. Take your card and probably throw it in the trash. Yeah, well, and the truth is, even at work, she might throw it in the trash, and I'm okay <laughs> with that. But, but what I've found is if you will just do that in your day-to-day, -day, you're going to come. She is more likely to tell me then, oh, actually, I do know somebody thinking of buying or selling than if I knock on her door. If I knock on her door, she's probably going to tell me, I'm not, no, I don't know anybody, I don't care, whatever, and shut the door. Go ahead. You know that we recently moved here, and so we've had a bunch of door knockers all of a sudden. And I hired two of them, even though I hate door knockers. But then when I needed that service, it was like, oh, I got someone's card already. Yeah. And so, I mean, when you do need it, though, if someone's been there recently, For that's sure. the first person but, In fact, it. actually, let me give you a, this is a total side note. I wasn't planning on doing this, but <laughs> since you brought that up, this up. That's true, bro. So at my house, here's my front door. So here's the front door, and then it's got two windows here. So at one point, the office that I was working at was like five minutes from my house. So pretty much every day I would at lunch, I would just go home and eat lunch with my wife. So this one particular day, though, I drive up to the house. I walk in, and I say to my wife, hey, how's it going? And she says, um, oh, I don't know what the deal is. So we live in a PUD, so a planning and development. And as part of that, there is this all this no soliciting things around in the neighborhood. So it's single family homes, but part of an HOA. So it's got this no soliciting and all this stuff. And a lot of the neighbors, technically they can't, we can't stop them. But a lot of the people in the HOA will call up the HOA and go, hey, there's people out soliciting, come get rid of them. And I remember this one particular day, I go home and my wife says, I don't know what the deal is, but we have had so many people knocking on the door. She's like, I'm not one to call the HOA and complain, but I'm about ready to call them and complain and say, like, come get these people to quit knocking on our doors. And, sh and she's like, I feel sorry for the next person that knocks on the door if somebody comes today. So we're sitting there eating a sandwich or whatever. 
And where I was sitting, so here's the front door, so the table is like sitting right here, and I'm sitting here eating, and all of a sudden I hear a knock at the door. Well, I turn and look, and I can see somebody standing here in the window right there, and, and not, they weren't like standing looking like that, but I could see there was somebody standing there, and I could tell I didn't know who it was, and I said to my wife, here's your chance. Like, I don't know who's at the door, so go out to the door. So she goes over, and she opens, up the, opens this door, and the guy says, hey, we're just out here seeing uh, if you want to get your windows cleaned. Um, you know, it's been a winter, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Just want to know if you want to get your windows cleaned. And my wife goes, yes, I've been waiting for you guys to come. And she shuts the door, and I'm like, what happened? I thought you were going to tear their heart out for this salesperson. She goes, well, I want somebody to clean my windows, though. So you're exactly right. Like, keep in mind, to some extent, when you're knocking on doors, that the people that get mad at you probably don't have a need to sell, so who cares? But the ones who do will respond exactly that way. When they need your help, they're going to say something. So, okay, good. So your first key thing you're going to do as an agent is you got to come up with people that need to buy or sell. So we got to find them. So we call that prospecting. So I'm going to have to prospect. Now, so here's the question. How often, though, whether it's an Internet or a social media lead, whether it's a door knocking, whatever, how often is it that you go and do that? Or so, Brandon, I'll pick on you for a minute. How often do you call somebody and they go, oh, yeah, we're just waiting for you to call. We want to buy a house. Come help us. Quite a bit. Oh, really? Well, with the leads, with the team leads. But, but, a lo it, like. Like, but out of 10, how many are going to say that for real? Um, are you like, oh, yeah, come on over. Help me. No, maybe one out of 100. Okay. So, yeah, thank you. So <laughs> when he said quite a bit, I'm like, hold on. Like, it, which I guess technically could be That's still filled. Yeah. yeah. But. But, so, the ones who say no, though, what do you do? Do you just like, okay, well, now I'm done with that, move on. No. What do you have to do? Um, objective handle, and get over, get past what they're... Okay, so let's say, that, that, let's say that I'm that lead and I go, yeah, hey, you know what, we're just, we're probably not going to do it for like six months. Oh, okay, okay, so, so you guys are waiting for six months. Uh -huh. and, uh, in that time, are you guys still going to be looking, or are you going to be holding off to look at something? Yeah, passively. Passively, okay, all right. And uh, can I just ask you what's important about uh, moving? Uh, just as soon as summer comes, we want to move. Okay. But we don't. We don't want to do disrupt during school. Okay. And uh, have you guys have you guys been out looking at all? No, we don't. It's too early to go look. Okay. Okay. Totally understandable. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not trying to. Okay. I'm not trying to put. But no, here was my point. If you can't get an appointment from me to right then, yeah, yeah. And, but yet I've said, yeah, we're going to do it, just not for a little while. Yeah. Are you going to just never call me again? No, I'll follow up in like two, two months. Okay, good. So that's the second piece. So first thing you're going to have to do is you got to prospect. But, but as you are prospecting or making phone calls, not everybody is going to automatically go, oh, yeah, come list my house. Yeah, I just was waiting for you to call. Like you're going to have, you're going to come across with some leads that then you're going to have to do lead follow up. So part of your job is going to be to do lead follow up. You're going to prospect, you're going to find some people that you get appointments with. So set a different way, which which this is where we're going to start to get into this. When you are prospecting, one of the challenges that remember I said to you most agents take a really long time to get their business up and running and that I'm going to help you with some ideas that will shorten that time frame. Here's what happens. When you, when you are, so Brandon, I'm going to keep picking on Okay. So when you are calling, what, what is your main objective of prospecting? To set an appointment. Yeah, so your number one objective in this prospecting is I got to get an appointment. Now, who do you want to get appointments with? People who are ready and able to buy. That's right. So set another way is typically what happens when most people are prospecting is they're looking for now business. Now, what I want to recommend to you is when you're prospecting, you want to prospect on two parallel tracks. I like to think about train tracks. You want to be prospecting on parallel tracks. I'm looking for the now business, meaning, let me ask it this way, and I do expect an answer to this from all of you. Who plans on being a licensed real estate agent a year from now? Okay, two years from now. So what if you came across somebody 
And you said, and they said, so let's go back to our scenario. That you called me, and instead of me saying six months, I had said, yeah, Brandon, we're going to do it, just not till, uh, probably it'll be just over a year. Because our, let's say that our youngest son is um, a senior in high school, or junior. So next okay. year, after he graduates, okay. we're going to sell our house and move. Okay. Do, do you want to stay in touch with that person, or should you say, no, nah, forget it, like, that's too far out? I usually make sure that you know what they need at that time, but then follow up, you know, and maybe half the time that they say. For, for sure. Yeah. yeah, which I want to highlight that for a second. One of the things you guys want to keep in mind is when somebody says to you, we're six months away, they're usually going to do it in three. If they say we're a year out, it's going to happen in six. It's usually, you want to cut in half what they tell you. If they said, to, so if I said, hey, we're probably going to move in the next two years, it'll probably be in the next year. So just know you want to cut in half whatever it is they're saying. So, but here's the point. If you, if you're going to work today, now, if you, if, if I don't explain this very clearly, please say, like, I don't get what you're saying. Because a lot of times I teach this and people will go, yeah, I get it, but they don't really get it. So, like, make sure you own what I'm about to say, okay? Because part of the problem is we spend all this time prospecting, which... I would say to you, well, I'm going to keep picking on you guys. So how much time are you spending prospecting on a daily basis? Two to three hours. Four to six. Okay. So two to six hours in a day is spent. Do you understand now why we're, why we're going to spend so much time talking today about this piece here is because of that. So two to six hours of your day is spent prospecting. Now. Here, remember I said to you, most agents, the failure rate is really, really high in this business. Here's the problem. Most agents, that when they prospect, I mean, like, tell the truth. Like, when do you want to get paid from this business? ASAP. Like, yeah, I mean, like, it's right now, right? Right? Like, just st stacking up a whole bunch of paychecks for two years from now. Two years from now would be nice, but, like, right. for today, what does that do for you? Yeah, okay. So... But unfortunately, we get so caught up in, I got to make my Mercedes payment or whatever, that we get so focused on this, that what, what happens is that agents forget that in a year from now, I'm going to still need a deal. Or two years from now, I'm going to still need a deal. Now, I will tell you, one of the things that you will hear in this business, and I am in agreement with it, if you understand what I'm about to say next, is you will hear people say, in fact, I told you there's a training going on right now that's with a national trainer, Mike Ferry, that he's doing that a bunch of our agents that would be here today or that, that. In that training, one of the things that they are probably going to hear today or tomorrow is you should only keep a lead for seven days. Now, I would agree with that if you're making half a million dollars a year in this business. Then I would agree. You probably should only keep a lead for seven days. But... The less business you have, the longer you should keep a lead. That's really the thing. That, that's how you should hear it. When somebody says, if you hear somebody say, only keep a lead for seven days, and, and the trainer, Mike Ferry, he, he will say, you just have to be listening, he will say, the less business you have, the longer you should keep the lead. But typically, he's talking to the top producing agents at the time, and so he's saying you should only keep it for seven days. But the challenge is a new agent hears that and goes, okay, I should only keep a lead for seven days. And then they don't have the skills to really know if they really should keep it or not, and so they get rid of leads. They, let me say it a different way. Here's what, in 23 years of me selling real estate and 15 of the last of that 23 years training, here's what I'll tell you. If you are not making over $100,000 a year in this business, you have got business falling through the cracks. Meaning it's there, it's just falling. You are not typically doing the lead follow-up is really what it is. You're not following up enough with the people or you don't have the skills to, to be able to distinguish who's real and who's not. And so it is falling through the cracks. And really, I probably should say $150,000 in today's world, but we'll keep it at, if you are not making $100,000 a year in this business, it is falling through the cracks. It's right there, you're just not capturing it. So, now, I'm gonna finish up this thought. So, 
as important as now business is, we, and we've got to focus on it, but don't forget that when you're prospecting, you need to be prospecting on two parallel tracks, meaning I should focus on the now business but when I'm prospecting. So let, let me, I'm going to reverse it. So let, I'm the agent now, you're the client. So let's say I knock on his door, and, and as I'm talking to him, he, said, he mentions, hey, yeah, we're probably going to do something down the road. A lot of agents will just go, oh, okay, well, here's my card. Just, you know, give me a call when you're um, ready to do something, and then they leave. Now, what did they get from that? Yeah, we say nothing, but what they really left with was hope, actually. Yeah. yeah. So they left, people are going to call me back. <laughs> now, what are the chances that left on his own with zero follow-up that he's going to call me back? Like a year from now. Probably not. Well, yeah. zero follow-up from you, but the other, agent, I mean. the other agent that called him the week, the month before is going to be like, oh, he's Mark Girk, you know. Exactly. Who, who, someone will surely reach out if it's not you. Oh, Jeff Lager here, his brother, was uh -huh. our agent when we bought here. Oh, really? Okay. Six months ago. And we weren't sure what we were going to do, so what he did is he said, well, he started sending me listings and said, this gives you an idea what, you know, all the new you know listings that came up. So I daily got a thing from him, and then by the time I was ready to buy it, I had a really good idea of where I'm going to be, what I wanted to spend. And it was just an easy, it was just one of those hot sheets with MLS. Mm -hmm. It kept me in touch with them every single day. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, but unfortunately, what happens, a lot of agents do, well, oh, here's my card, give me a call. And they may even go back and think about following up with them, but they will follow up for a short time, and then they don't hear anything or whatever. And so just keep in mind that you've got to be prospecting on two parallel tracks. So we got to be doing this, like I'm looking for the now business, but, but at the back of your mind, you also have to know, like, hey, if he says he's going to do something a year from now, I plan on being in business a year from now. So with just a little bit of follow-up, I've got I'm working. So let me say it differently. While you're prospecting, you want to work on today's business, but at the same time that you're working on today's business, work on your business for a year from now or six months or two years from now at the same time. Said it said another way, if this business does not get easier for you the longer you're in it, you're doing it wrong. Because what should happen is the longer you're in this business, the easier it should get. Because while I'm working for today's business, see, if you do it right, you're going to spend two to six hours prospecting early on in your career. But there's going to come a time where, so like where I'm at today, 23 years later, people just call me now. And I don't say that in any arrogant, bragging way, but if you do this business right. Now, I've got other classes that we, today we're not going to talk about your sphere of influence, but I'm going to, I teach one that is on sphere of influence that, have you been to that one? Mm -hmm. Oh, you got to come. Yeah. Because seriously, it is the, I, it is the one thing I will guarantee you if you will follow, I give you four protocols in that class. If you will follow those four things, I, I will guarantee you over $150,000 a year income because it is a math problem. And, and I teach you that in that class. I teach you how to do it. And really what I'm teaching you is how to work in such a way that you're creating this future business. So it'll take six to nine, it does this. It'll take six months before it starts to pay off here. And, and I'm not saying you will not have business before that, but from that point on, you'll be over a six digit income, guaranteed, because it's a math problem. And I teach you how to do it. So make sure you come back for that class, for Do you sure. Have the schedule? Uh, yes. Let me see if, I don't know if this is the current. Is it part of the? Uh -huh. April 11th. Okay. So it's like two weeks. And, and, and uh, all the stuff that I will train you guys in, that one is probably my favorite class of all because it is guaranteed to work. It, there's four things, and if you'll follow the four things, Guaranteed to work. All right. Is it at 10 o'clock here too? Uh huh. Yep. Okay. So, so you got to prospect. You got to follow up. And then the third thing that you're going to have to do, which is we're not going to spend much time on today. We do have another class for this, but you got to present to people. So your job really becomes: I've got a prospect. I got to do my lead follow up, which is why I'm saying we're looking for the now business, but we want to create our future business at the same time. See, it, it's no extra effort for me to set up a deal for a year from now or two years from now, 
while I'm looking for the, the now business. Now, here's part of the problem, though. Agents get so focused on this now business. Have you ever, have any of you ever dealt with maybe a car salesman or something where you could tell that all they cared about was what? Oh my they gosh. They yep. <laughs> And They're, how did you feel about it? I hated it. Like, they had a whole different language in there. Like, you could hear just how they were talking to each other. And then they come to you and they're talking to voice and how they're going to represent, you know, try and represent the seller or whatever. It just seemed so fake. It was false. And I was like, I don't even want to deal with you, you know, and uh -huh. find somebody who actually cares, who's on your side, who wants to help you. See, so here's the challenge. Now, this is the piece that I said, make sure you understand this. When you have that person who has what I like to call commission breath, you can just smell it, that right. all they care about is getting paid the commission. How do you respond to that? Get me out of here. Right. That's right. You don't, because why? Why? Because it's uncomfortable and you're not interested at all at that point. That's right. What happens is you can tell they care only about getting paid, not about you. So, see, the challenge that we have, when we go out looking... Now, I'm not saying we don't try to get appointments. So I'm gonna, we're going to work through a lot of that today and Thursday on this, how do I get the appointments? We're going to work on that. But if it comes across that all you care about is getting a paycheck today, the way they're going to respond, even if they are serious about it, in fact, what I will tell you is, and I'll show you this in just a minute, the people who are the closest to doing a deal are the ones that if they pick up on that all you care about is a deal today, they are going to be the hardest ones for you to actually break through and get an appointment with. Yet, if you will treat them more like this, then the people who are the now show up easier. So it's almost it's a little counterintuitive, meaning it's the opposite of what you would think. You would think I gotta be real aggressive with these people, but it's almost like the lack of aggressiveness helps them to relax, to be willing to then set an appointment with you. Does that make sense? So as we talk about this, you want to prospect on two parallel tracks. So what I mean by that is, so Brandon, let me do another with you, okay? So let's assume that, that I'm knocking on his door, that you uh, need to sell, but... Um, you're not sure if you want to use me or not. Oh, does it make sense? Yeah. So, so okay. So I knock on his door. Knock, knock. Hello. Hi. My name's Russ with Century Twenty One. We just listed your neighbor's home over here, the Johnsons. Do you know them? Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, yeah, I'm sure you're aware they got a job transfer. They're moving to Texas. Yep. So they they've hired us to help them get their home sold. And so okay. typically, we like to find out from the neighbors who you know that would like to move into the area. Um, we've been kind of thinking about it. Oh, really? About selling, but uh, uh, I'm not uh, sure. Oh, so, okay. So now, what would most people do right then? If if I'm like need a paycheck, what do most people do? I don't know anyone. No, no, no. If I'm the agent. Oh, okay. If I'm the agent and he said we've been thinking about it, what do what would most people that are if I'm focused only on the now, what am I going to do? Awesome, great. Let's talk about Great. Yeah. What do we need to do? Let's let's. So how how soon can we talk about getting your home sold? Um. I'm kind of busy. <laughs> oh, oh, you're busy? Oh, yeah, but uh, like I, I'm i telling you, I'll be able to get you the best deal out there. Nobody's better than I am. I'm all right. Like, can you see? What? For real, how are you going to respond to that? Get out of my safe. Yeah, which I intentionally did. Like, I'm like, come on. So, but yet, if I approached it as, here's how I would approach it. Watch this. So, um, who do you, so let's replay. So, I'm going to, so who do you know that was would like to move into the area? Uh, Say we've really been thinking about it. But we've been thinking about selling. Oh, you guys have been thinking about it? Oh, that's awesome. So how long have you lived here? About 20 years. 20 years. Wow, that's great. So yeah. if, if you did sell this home, then where were you, would you go next? To the neighbor's house. Oh, really? Oh, really? You would actually think about buying theirs? Really? What is it about their house that... It's bigger. Bigger lot. Okay, so just thinking about something a little bit bigger. Okay. Yeah. So what was the time frame you were thinking? Um, maybe the next three to six months. Somewhere in the three to six months. Okay, awesome. Well, that's great. Well, so let me ask you, um, when, when you when it, that time does come, I know you're not ready right now, yeah, yeah. but when that time does come, would you rather be over-prepared or under? Over-prepared. 
You'd rather be overprepared. Okay, great. Well, you know what we ought to do then, actually, Brandon? I work with my clients at their pace, so like I'm not trying. Now, notice what I'm doing. I work with my... Uh, if you don't write anything else down from class today, write this down. I work with my clients at their pace. Right. I'm telling you, that is the best kept secret in this business. I work with my clients at their pace. What am I telling him if I say that? That he's your client. Good. And what else? It's on his, no it's on yeah. his terms. It's on your terms. Like, hey, I work with my clients at their pace. You should say that over and over. Anytime you can sense that they feel like you're trying to push them, you go, oh, Brent, hey, I work with my clients at their pace. So, like, I'm not, you know, concerned about when you do it. Because, see, here's the thing. Stop and think for a minute. Let's say, hypothetically, you were making $250,000, $300,000 a year from real estate. Do you really care if somebody sells today or three, six a year from now? Yeah, meaning like I'm not stressed about it. I can make my house payment, so I don't have to worry of am I going to have the money. So I'm not going to be as concerned of, hey, oh, that's great. So you're three to six months. Okay, perfect. Well, I've got some ideas that will help you be more prepared for that. So let's talk about it. So I work with my clients at their pace. That is one of the best things you can say that – that will relieve the pressure. So if you're calling on your leads and somebody says to you, oh yeah, we're just curious. We're not, you know, we're probably not going to do anything for a year or so. Oh, hey, that's great. I work with my clients at their pace. But let me ask you, when the time does come, would you rather be overprepared or under? But what, and who's ever going to say, I'd rather be underprepared, right? They're never going to say that. Now remember, what am I prospecting for? Okay, good. But really, what I'm looking for is as an appointment. Now, I'm okay if I end up with a lead. But my first, think of it this way. This is my, your primary objective is the now, is to get an appointment. My secondary is to get a lead. But my first objective is to get an appointment with these people. So what I'm going to say to Brandon when he says that is, hey, that's great. But what, let me ask you, when that time comes, would you rather be overprepared or underprepared? Well, I'd rather be overprepared. Oh, perfect. Well, then you know what we need to do is we need to sit down and spend 20 to 30 minutes just so that I can walk. Now, remember what I told you? What is the second most common thing that they search for? Yeah, what's the process? So guess what I'm going to say to him? So, Brandon, what we ought to do is sit down and let me walk you through the process. Spend 20, 30 minutes walking you through the process of what it's going to look like for you to be the most prepared buyer when, you, when the time does come for you to buy. How does that sound? So does that make sense? See, if I do that, I'm now going from, hey, I got to get, I got, hey, I can help you. I, I, I'm the best there is. I know what I'll do. I know how to get you the house and we're going to make you all this money. Like that feels pushy versus, hey, I've got some ideas that when you are ready are going to help you make a lot of money or make be the most prepared buyer in the market. And so all we need to do is sit down and spend 20 to 30 minutes. So when would be the best time for you, at afternoon or evening? Uh, afternoon. Afternoons. Okay, yeah. great. Now I've got an appointment. Now remember, remember we talked about you're going to cut it in half? So if he told me that we're thinking six months from now, I already know it's probably three months from now. And here's what I have found. When he comes in to meet with me and we sit down to talk about it, what I found happens is... On that initial prospecting phone call or a door knock or whatever, they have a barrier up. They're like, I don't know. Now, and why? Let's analyze that for a minute. Why? Some other people. They're not going to be yeah, At the end of the day, I don't know who said it. Trust. Yeah, the, at the end of the day, they don't know if they trust you. They're not sure because they're not sure. Are you looking out for you or are you looking out for me? Like, do you really want to help me or do you just want to get a paycheck? But what I found is when they come and meet you that second time, now you're almost like this friend. And so they show up at the appointment and I would go, hey, so now I understand you were thinking six months out and, and blah, blah, blah. And so let me walk you through the process. And then I would walk them through. Here's what the process looks like. And I would walk them through the process. What I found happens every time. If they show up. Now, I want to be clear. You can get people to agree to an appointment through by doing the, hey, would you rather be overprepared or underprepared? The overprepared, great. We just need to sit down and spend 20 to 30 minutes. The people who really are a long ways off, it is not going to be uncommon for them to no-show you or call and cancel last minute, which I'm okay with. 
because I work with my clients at their pace. So as soon as they call to cancel, what are they telling you when they call to cancel? Because does that ever happen? Do they ever cancel on you? Oh, yeah. And why are they doing that? Because they're scared still that you're going to try to force them to do something they're not prepared to do. Yeah. So you got to go right back. So let's. So call me to, to be one of your leads that canceled on you recently. So call me up to cancel. Hey, is this Brandon? No, this is Russ. Wait. So, <laughs> so you're kidding. me and I'm the yeah, client. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Hey, yeah, this is Brandon. Hey, uh, yeah, we were just going to let you know we weren't, we're not going to make it tonight. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, just something came up or. Um, yeah, yeah, we're just, uh, yes, it just came up. Okay, hey, no worries. So when would be a better time? Maybe sometime next week. I'll have to get with my wife and let you know. We'll, okay. We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll, call, we'll contact you. Okay, hey, no worries, Brandon. Hey, like, just remember what I, I told you. I work with my clients at their pace. I'm telling you, you have got to get to where you just start saying that over and over and over and over. Hey, just remember, I work with my clients at their pace. Okay. So us meeting... I'm not going to be I'm not going to be that pushy salesperson that tries to force you to buy a house. Like I totally am cool with whatever pace you want to work. Okay. So next week sounds like it'll be better? Uh yeah, yeah. Okay. See, I just want to keep putting him at ease that look, I'm not worried about now business. I just want to help you when you're ready. Whenever that is. I don't really even care when it is because I plan on being in this business for a long time. So it doesn't really matter to me when you're going to be ready because I'll be there. Now, as soon as he can sense that that's really what I'm feeling, then he goes, oh, okay, yeah, well, let's go meet with the guy. What's it going to hurt? Yeah. And then, But here's what I found. Once they come in and meet with me and he sits down and I walk him through the process, what's usually the first thing I'm going to want him to do? Okay, after the agreement, yes, I love it. What, but after that, what do I want him to do? That's right. I want him to get with the lender. So at the appointment now, what I found is what happens is they go, okay, now you've walked us through the process. So like, how soon should we start talking to the lender then? So how soon should they talk to the lender? Today. Yeah, today. And I go, hey, well, let's get you in and talk to them. Now, here's what happens. Once they talk to the lender, the lender says, hey, yeah, perfect. You can qualify and this is how much you qualify for. That's like almost being handed money. And as soon as you hand them money, what happens to most people when they get money? They want to spend it. See, so if I can walk them through the process and, hey, I work with, and I'm not lying to them. Like, in fact, that's where we're going to transition to that next. I am not lying to them when I say I work with my client because I really don't care. If it's going to be six months, I'm okay with it. I'm just telling you guys what I have found is when they come in and sit down with me, what tends to happen is this. They get the money, meaning they find out what they qualify for. It's like you've just given them $300,000, $400,000 to put in their pocket. It starts to burn a hole in their pocket, and they see a house and go, Hey, Brent, we just saw this house. Could we go take a look at it? And then you go look at it, and then what happens? They want to buy it. And they write an offer. So meaning by approaching this on this parallel track, so, hey, I work with my clients at their pace. So, like Now, don't misunderstand that, though, to notice I still wanted to get an appointment. Even though I'm saying, look, I work with my clients at their pace, and I don't really care when you buy. Notice I'm still following up with, but you know what we ought to do is I want you to be the most prepared buyer, or if he was a seller, the most prepared seller in the market. When you are ready, I want you to be the most prepared. And the only way to do that is start sooner. So think of it this way. The further out they are, the more excited you should be. So if Jennifer says to me, like, hey, we're two years out. Oh, my gosh. That is so exciting because you know what? Very rarely do I come across somebody who has that much time to prepare. Man, you are going to be so thankful that we started right today on because of what it's going to do for you. So now what works better for you, afternoons or evenings? Evenings. See? Now if I can get that appointment, what's going to happen is all of a sudden it speeds it up. Now I'm going to, I'm going to show you that in just a second. So I'm being a little long-winded on where I was trying to go with this. But Okay, so I'm going to come back to this. Any questions so far? Thoughts? Comments? One thing in this market, people's qualification isn't rising as quickly as the house prices. Correct. And so sometimes that's a motivation to help them. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so perfect example of when they come in and, and me making them the most prepared. 
part of what I would want to do is show them, let me show you what's going on with the inventory, and if rates tick up or prices go up, your buying power a year from now is going to be a lot less, meaning you're going to get less of a house for the same amount of money. Now, again, I work with my clients at their pace, so I'm not trying to convince you to buy a house before you're ready. I just remember, I want you to be the most prepared. I want you to be able to think that through. So yeah, I may plant that seed that, hey, the longer you wait, the higher the prices are going. Because here's what I will tell you, looking at our inventory, our prices are still going to keep going up. Like the number of people that can afford it is not as high. So we're, we are seeing a slowdown, but it has nothing to do with the inventory. It's all affordability right now. So yeah, thank you. Okay. Now, so let me walk you through, I want to walk you through another piece here of what I like to call this, um, this is going to be like your path to success. So when you first start out as, as a brand new agent, you're going to end up in what we would call or what I like to call the activities phase. During the activities phase is when early on, what you're going to feel like is, and I'm not even going to ask for a raise of hands because I already know most of you sitting here today are thinking this, what I'm about to say right now. If, so who's, who has passed the test the most recently? When? Three weeks ago. Three, about the same, about three weeks ago. Okay. That's so good enough. Assume that today, like right now, your phone rings. You answer. And, and I'm on the other line, but I'm not an agent, and I say Rebecca, come. I, we need to sell our house. Um, I just was given your name um, from somebody else. So can you come out today and list our home? Absolutely. Like, yeah. But what's going on inside of you right now? Don't look down. Okay. And how the heck do I do this? Yeah. How do I do this, right? Is that right? Like, so here's what I've found. Most of the time, the thing that holds agents back from... Remember I said business is falling through the cracks? Part of how it falls through the cracks is somebody calls and says, come list my house. And we go, okay, yeah, great, yeah, okay, I'll set the appointment, and then we go, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do, like, how do, I, how do I do this, what do I do? And so we panic. So during this activities phase, what tends to happen is we feel like I've got to learn everything there is to know before I make any phone calls. Because here's the question, I'm going to put you on the spot a little. So you've had your license for three weeks. How many door knocks or phone calls have you done so far? Um, not many, but I have been an offer. Oh, I good. Have, I have a client already. Oh, good. 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 That's awesome. But, so, but how many contacts have you made? Probably three. Okay. You mean um, contacts like SOIs? people you don't know? Oh, yeah. Well, SOI is fine too. Yeah, what? probably half a dozen. Okay. Yeah. How many? I called my like list of people I know, okay. um, and then some door knocking. Okay. And I haven't got set up for leads and all that through the team yet, so I have okay. okay. So I have people I know, no phone calls yet. Okay. How many? Oh, yeah. Phone calls? Yeah. Or knocks on doors or other. I haven't knocked the door and I haven't. I'm not out. So what? <laughs> I'm not trying to be mean, no, but okay. like I'm trying to prove a point because right. what you're I going through is normal. Yeah. Right. Right. So right. why? Tell the truth. Personally? Yeah. Because I have. Business, and this is something that I'm doing. I, I, okay. I feel like I'm not prepared yet to. Thank that. you. That's, That's why. Yeah. At the end of the day, that is a very normal. I did it. I remember. Uh, I remember going. Remember, I told you my broker said just go knock on doors. Like one of the first times I went out knocking on doors, I said to the other agent that was with me, "Okay, now what do I do if somebody says yes?" <laughs> now notice, at the end of the day, we're really more, at least most of the time, not everybody, but most of the time, we're more scared they're going to say yes than no. If they say no, I. I I mean, yeah, it hurts, but I'm not out anything. But if they say yes, now all of a sudden, what if they ask me a question I don't know the answer to? They will ask a question. Yeah, they will, right? <laughs> so what happens is we get stuck in this. I got to go to class. I got to study this. I got to learn all that. Like I, I've got to wait to start making phone calls because what if somebody? Yeah, they're going to ask me a question I don't know the answer to. Very normal. But notice what happens. How much? If this is your income, how much money do you make? In the activity space? Negative. Yeah, negative. <laughs> so that's the activity space. The next phase is what we would call the contact phase. Now, in the contact phase is when we're out making contacts. Now, so let me tell you, remember I said 
most agents take a really long time before they really start to get consistent at an income, and I'm just not, I mean, one thing you guys can count on for me is I'm going to tell you the truth. Like, that's one thing I've learned in this business, especially in training, is I want to tell you the truth. So, typically, it is a long process. Now, the reason it's a long process, I learned the hard way because, remember I said, I went to my broker and said, tell me what to do, and he said, go make a list of everyone you know, send him a letter, Okay, now go knock on doors. So I was going and knocking on doors. Now he had this formula that looked something like this. I wanted, I told him that I wanted to make $100,000 in this, so this is 23 years ago. My goal was I want to make $100,000. He said, okay, based on that, there's a, he had this formula, which I, by the way, I believe in the formula, but not the way he gave it to me. And I'll explain what it means. But basically what he did was this. At that time, the average commission check that you would get for a hundred on, to, excuse me, on a, the average sales price when I started 23 years ago was about half of what it is now. So it was about $150,000. So the commission on that typically would end up being right around $2,000. So if I wanted to make $100,000 and I was going to get $2,000 per check, how many closings did I have to have? Yeah, so I'd have to get 50 closings. So from there, what he his formula basically said that if you wanted to get, and, and I don't remember exactly the formula, but if I wanted to get 50 closings, that means I had to do like, I don't remember how many more, but I'd have to put like 65 under contract or something. And in order to get 65 under contract, I'd have to go on X number of listing appointments and X number of buyer's appointments. And in order to do that, you would have to do... It was this long, complicated formula that really just boiled down to however many closings you want is how many contacts you need to make, is basically what it boiled down to. So what he told me is, you need to go make 50 contacts a day. I said, okay, I'm going to go do it. So I started doing that. So what would happen is, this is what it looked like for me, is I would get to the office at about 9 every day. There was an agent that had started about the same time as me, so let me pause for a minute. One of the things I would highly recommend you guys do, find somebody to be like a prospecting partner. Now, when I say partner, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to split everything. But I found, and, and nobody told me this, it just kind of happened, but I found a lady at the office that I just said, hey, let's go knock on doors together. So what would happen is we would go out to a street. She would go on one side of the street. I would go on the other, and we would knock doors, and... I would just kind of keep an eye on her, she'd keep an eye on me, meaning if she got into a conversation with somebody and I'd hit three, four, or five doors this way, I would notice, oh, she's quite a bit back. So I would just kind of stand there and wait to watch to make sure she was okay coming along. And she would do kind of the same thing. So we'd kind of stay about, just basically within eyesight is probably the way we would do it, is how I would say it. But the reason I would highly recommend you do that was is for the accountability. Meaning if you just... For most people, if they just said, I'm going to get up and go to the gym tomorrow, do most people get up and go to the gym the next day just on their own? They might for a week or two, but then what happens? It usually peters out. But if you have somebody that you're like, hey, I'm going to meet you at the gym tomorrow morning at 6 a.m., what's going to happen if I don't show up at 6? Are you going to call me? You're going to call and be like, dude, I got out of bed. Why are you here? Right? That's the same thing with prospecting. What I found is, for me, if I had Shirley that, that so what we would do is Shirley and I would meet at the, at the office at 9 a.m. At 9.15, we would go into a room and we would do some role play. So we would practice our scripts and things of, hey, what are you going to say? And, and, and usually what we would do is, from the day before, I would, I would throw out to Shirley. I would say, okay, somebody said this to me, how would you respond to it? And then I would let her tell me how she would respond. And she would say to me, well, somebody said this to me. How would you respond? Well, I don't know. This is what I usually say to that. So like, we would just role play and practice that. So we'd usually do that for about a half an hour. At 9.45, we would go jump in either her car or mine. And we had a neighborhood actually out in Kearns that we loved. The houses there were $80,000 each. Today, those same houses are like two sixty, dollars But they were $80,000 each. And the reason I loved them, if you listed one, it was sold like that. Like because it was the lowest houses in the you know market price range wise. So we would go door knock this area, these $80,000 houses. We'd knock on doors, knock on doors. And my objective was to get to 25 contacts. So typically, so from 10 until about noon, and, and today you probably aren't gonna get as many, but I could usually 
get to 25 by noon or 12.30 at the latest. We would both hit about 25 contacts. Then from there, I'd go home and I'd go to lunch. Shirley and I would then meet back at the office at 2, and from 2 o'clock until 4-ish, we would jump on the phone to make the other 25 contacts. So every day I was making 50 contacts. Now, remember, I told you like a year and a half into the business, well, I don't know if I gave you this detail, but a year and a half into the business, I had basically, I was working at a bank, and I had quit the bank to come into real estate. And I had quit the bank to come into real estate because I had called my uncle, who was a builder, said, hey, I'm thinking about doing real estate, what do you think? And he said, well, I have four people that sit in my model homes, and this, again, this is 25 years ago. He says, two of them I paid over 60000 a year, the other two I paid over 100000 Well, at the time, I'm making like thirty. So I'm like, 60 sounds great to me. I'm quitting my job and going for real estate. So I get my license. I call my uncle. Hey, I want to come sit your model homes. Well, I've already got four agents, and until one of them quits, and I don't know that any of them are going to quit because they're making pretty good money. So I was like, well, now what do I do? So he pointed me to the company I went to. So, um, so I'm making 50 contacts a year. Now, remember, according to his formula, 50 contacts a year should equate to 50 transactions in a year. And $2,000 in closing, $100,000 a year. So it's been a year now that I've had my license, but that I have been making 50 contacts a day. So essentially, the only day I didn't was on the day that we had sales meeting. And on those days, I would only do 25 contacts. So, so really, I was doing 225 contacts a week is what I was doing. Well, at the end of the year, I had replaced basically my income. So said another way, I've made like $35,000. But hold on. Like according to this formula, I, if I do 50 contacts, I should have made 100000 So what happened? Your future. Okay, good. I like the idea, like your positive you thinking. You estimated half over a few years. But. Yeah, I wish. Here's what I found, actually. And this is, so I do believe that this can happen, but the, here's the problem. I actually have watched over my years a number of agents come in and make 50 contacts every day and never have a closing ever. So why? They're doing the same thing skillset. over and over. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's skill set. They're doing the same thing. They're not getting better at what they're doing. So you got to work on the skill set. But here's what I found. Watch this. Remember what we're talking about is this, this learning curve or this pathway to your success here. Notice in this contacts phase, and, and really this line, I didn't draw that very well. It should probably be like more like right here. Notice during the contacts phase, how much liftoff is there? Not much. Now, here's why. Bless you. This is what it looked like. So I, my goal was to get 50 contacts in a day. So guess what I would get every day? 50 contacts. So let me show you what I mean. I would go knock on the door. Knock, knock. Hi, my name's Russ. I'm with Century 21. We just listed this home over here. Who do you know that wants to move into the area? I don't know anybody. Okay, I appreciate you thinking about that. How? Um, when do you plan on moving? I'm happy here. I'm not going to move. How long have you lived here? 28 years. Where did you move from? Lehigh. Oh, what brought you here? I got married. Oh, really? So if you ever were to move, where would you go next? Um, I'm not going to Memphis. This is where I'm going to stay. Okay, great. Well, here's my card. If you hear of anybody, let me know. Like, that's what... Because what was I looking for? Was that a contact? Right. Yeah. Yeah, see, I was looking for a contact is all I was looking for. And did I get a contact? Yes, sweet, I got a contact. Next. Guess what would happen on this conversation? About the same, and about the same, and about the same, about the same, about the same. Like, that's what would happen. When you're in the contact phase, the reason there's not much lift off is because you're looking for a contact. Now, so I, now remember, I had been licensed about a year and a half, coming up on two years. I went and met the guy that trained me in all, all, pretty much all the stuff I'm going to train you guys in. Not all of it, but a lot of it. That um, I'm going to train you guys in. I learned from this guy. And, and his background actually was he went to the University of Utah to, to get a PhD in physics. He wanted to be a rocket scientist. Went and did an internship and realized, I do not want to be a rocket scientist. He got involved in business consulting. This is like 40 years ago. And specifically got involved in real estate consulting. And he's the one who then taught me this. So I'm at a training that he did. did. So I remember, I've been a year and a half in the business. I, I go to this training. I'm frustrated because I want to be making $100,000 a year. I'm working. Have you ever made 50 contacts in a day? Yeah. How long did it take you to do it? 
Um, a couple hours. No. You mean, uh... 50 talk to. Oh, oh, I was thinking calls. No, yeah, that's why I'm like, there is no <laughs> way you did it in a couple hours. Um, honestly, probably not. Okay? Yeah, no. probably not. What's the most you've ever done in a day? Talk to. Probably 25. Okay. 25 is oh, normal. That's what or, I or like on the big end. Um, How long did it take you to do it? Uh, all day. Yeah, so here's my point. To make 50 contacts in a day takes a long time. So, meaning... It, so if you made 50 contacts today, and what would you feel like when you went home? Your brain would be dead. But you're going to feel like, I worked hard. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. So every day I would go home feeling like I worked hard. So I go to this. I'm frustrated because I'm busting my butt. Making 50 contacts in a day, you'll see, is not an easy thing to do. It takes a lot of time. Like, you're probably at least five or six hours to do that, to, to get that many contacts. So I'm feeling like I'm working really hard, but I was still like at a third of what I supposedly would make. So I go to this training, and this guy's talking about, you know, being successful and stuff. And I'm frustrated, so I raise my hand, and I'm like, I work really hard, and I am not making the income. Like, Because he, he actually, that comment that I made to you of if you're not making $100,000 a year, it's slipping through the cracks, that's where I got it. He's made that comment, and I was like, hold on. Like, I don't know how that's possible because I'm working really hard. So we had a little bit of a dialogue. At the end of the dialogue, he said to me this. What if I told you you could prospect half as much but double your income? I was like, tie me up. Tell me what to do. So what he did is he drew this on the board, which mine looks horrible now. But he showed me this activities phase. He said, here's the problem. You're stuck in this contacts phase. This is what your income looks like in the contacts phase. When you're in the contacts phase, that's how much money you're going to make. And I was like, okay, well, so then tell me what to do. And here's what he said. Is he showed me the next phase. Now, notice the steepest part of this curve. Let me get rid of this. The steepest part of this curve is in the next phase, which is what we would call the appointments phase. In the appointments phase, that is the steepest part of this learning curve. Meaning, that's the hardest part about this business is this. And what he said is, the, here's the problem. You are so focused on contacts that you're working so hard to get a contact every day. Meaning, if I come back to this, how much time did I spend with her to get a contact? Like, for real. A minute. And, and that's pretty much, like, if you think about going and knocking on doors, and I spend a minute, and then I go, you know, three or four doors, and then she's home, and I talk for a minute, and then I go four or five doors, and then talk, like... It was, it was a race to like, okay, the faster I get to the 50, I can be done. And remember, I would go home and feel like I worked really hard today. But at the end of the day, I didn't really have anything. So what he said was this. Quit focusing on contacts. Now, that does not mean don't keep track. You should still keep track. And the reason I say you should keep track is because you want to be able to know how many contacts on average... Does it take for me, to, and I would keep track based on the source of business, meaning if, you, if I'm out knocking on doors, you want to keep track how many doors talk to or knock, do I have to knock on and or talk to in order to get an appointment? Because after a time, you'll develop like an average that for you. And see, the challenge that I had with him saying this formula is every one of you guys has a different skill set. So for me to say to you, if you make 50 contacts, you'll get 50 closings, that might be true for you, but it might not be true for you. It might, you know, it's going to vary. But you can figure out for you how many contacts do I have to make to get an appointment. And once you know that, then your objective is what? How do I get better? How do I reduce it? How do I get an appointment with even less contacts? How, so meaning, how do I improve my skills, which we will talk about today and tomorrow. But so you should keep track of the contacts. But what he said to me is instead of focusing on getting 50 contacts, what I want you to do is prospect until you get an appointment. As soon as you get an appointment, you can be done prospecting. Now, what would change for you if that was the case? Meaning I was so focused on getting to 50 contacts that I wouldn't spend much time with somebody. If I told you... So let's hypothetically say, which he did say this to me, and I made an agreement to do it. You can't go home tomorrow until you get an appointment. So until you set an appointment, you can't go home. 
So you're going more for quality than quantity. So yes. it's more of a, a relationship that you're developing, even if it's, you may end up talking with them for 15 minutes and get nothing, but you develop a friendship that now you just increase your, your Perfect. influence. Perfect. And remember, I'm going to start to tie some of this together. If I can't get an appointment from you, and I'll teach you this in the SOI class, I want to keep you as a lead that I would add to my SOI or sphere of influence, and, and I'll show you why, how the power of that works in that class. But I want to get an appointment with you, or I want to get you as a lead that I'm going to follow up with later on. So yes, good. What else would you, for real, like for real for you guys, if I told you tomorrow you can't go home until you set an appointment, what would you do differently? <laughs> okay. What else? Well, you'd work smarter, you know. You okay, good. You wouldn't just go for the numbers. You, you, you know, what is it really going to take to find them? Right? Okay, good. Let me ask you this. Let me. I'm going to ask a few other questions. Remember, I was showing up at 9 a.m. What time would you show up to work tomorrow if I told you you can't go home tomorrow until you get an appointment? Probably earlier. At what time? 7:30. That's what time I show the next day. So, because in this training, he taught me this, and he said, look, if you will do this, you'll prospect half as much, but you'll double your income. Okay, great. I, I was like, oh, sign me up. I'll do it. So he said, okay, for the next week, you can't go home until you set an appointment. I was like, okay. So I went home that night. I told my wife, I am not coming home tomorrow if I don't set an appointment. And she was like, well, then you better get like to work. So 7.30, I'm at the office. I'm looking up for sale by owners. I'm looking up expireds. Like I'm, I'm going through all. All of a sudden, you become really good at lead follow up when you do that too. Because I was like, hey, probably my best chance of getting a deal is to call people who are previous leads. So 7:30, man, I'm getting all my leads ready. I'm getting for sale by owners ready. I'm getting the expired listings ready because technically you can't start telemarketing till 8 a.m. So 8 a.m., man, I'm on. Start. I'm calling the leads. Hey. Who do you know that wants to buy or sell? Do you guys want to get together? Hey, when can we get together? Like, and I got an appointment within ten in two, by ten o'clock. Now remember, Shirley and I would at nine forty-five would leave to go door knocking. So about nine forty-five, she comes knocking on my door and she's like, "So are we going?" And I was like, "Oh, I'm not going today." Why? Well, I've already got my appointment. And and as a good accountability partner, she was like, "You're making a mistake. Like, you need to go door knocking. Like, you'll be sorry." For not door knocking. And I said, just for the next week, Shirley, if I set an appointment, so even if we're door knocking, if I set an appointment, then I'm done. And she was a good partner. She was like, no, you're not. Like, you got to keep prospecting. And I said, just for the next week. So for the next week, every day, I had an appointment within two hours. And But if you, if, if you went back to when I was doing 225 contacts in a week, very rarely, I mean, I probably got two appointments out of 225 contacts. But all of a sudden now, I was making probably half as many contacts, but I was doubling my appointments. Now, so why? What's different? Well, number one, I showed up earlier to get going is one thing. But but let me show you what my door knocking looked like now. So we're going to do the same thing. So knock, knock. Yes. Hi, my name's Russ. I'm with Century 21. We just listed your neighbor's home over here, the Johnsons. Do you know them? I do. Do you? Okay. So I'm sure you know they got a job transfer, and so they're moving to Texas. Mm -hmm. So what we've found is usually the best way to find a buyer is to f talk to the neighbors. So who do you know that wants to move into the area? Um, actually, know a couple people. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. So would you mind giving me their number so I can give them a call? Um, I would prefer if you give me their number and I'd be happy. Okay, to sure. Them. Here's my card. Yeah, if you'll pass that on to them. So um, when do you think you'd have a chance to talk to them? I'll give them a call today. Today? Okay. So would it be okay if I check back with you tomorrow? Just sure. to see how it went? Sure. Okay, well, let me get your contact information. So I'm going to get her information if I can get it. If she won't give it to me, great. I'll come knock on your door tomorrow then. I don't want to answer. <laughs> I already told you my answer. So, le so let me ask you, though, uh, what about you? When do you plan on moving? So now I remember I've, we've already dealt with her. She might know some people. Great. So when do you plan on moving? Um, actually, no. No plans? No. Really? Okay, that's great. So how long have you lived here? For 28 years, you're kidding. That's great. Where'd you move from? Lehigh. From Lehigh to here. Good for you. So what brought you here? I got married. Oh, really? Congratulations. That's cool. Well, I guess con congratulations 28 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. But that's awesome. Good for you. Well, hey, well, let me ask you, just if you ever were to move, where would you go next? Hawaii. Hawaii, really? Oh, that'd be cool. So when would that be? <laughs> 
<laughs> when the kids have all moved away. Okay. How old are your kids? My youngest is 17. Okay. Oh, really? So in the next couple of years, probably. <laughs> um, my 25 is still at home. So oh, <laughs> okay. So it might be a long time. Is what you're saying. <laughs> so it might be a while. Okay. No, no worries. Well, so let me ask you, though, um, how are you using real estate to plan for your financial future to help get you to Hawaii? Am I using real estate? Yeah, like owning investment properties, things like that. No, I haven't. Yeah. No, have have you guys have you ever considered owning some investment properties? Um, no. No, really. Okay. But so I guess let me just you know real just one more question real quick and I'll let you go. But just um, if there was a way that you could do that to have some passive income, is it something you'd be interested in learning more about? Sure. Okay. So one of the things I like to do is just educate people on that, help them see, and you know it may or may not work for you. I don't know, but. Um, I'd be happy to sit down, spend 30 minutes with you, just helping you understand what the process and things look like. So what works better, afternoons or evenings? Afternoons. Afternoons? Okay, so like 3 or 2? Um, 3 3 o'clock. Okay, great. So would tomorrow work or is Thursday better? Tomorrow's great. Tom so, okay, so tomorrow 2 o'clock. Great. Hey, it was good to meet you. We'll talk to you later. What did I just get? <laughs> now I can go home. See? So, no, so what was the difference? Between the first conversation and the second one, your focus. Okay. A variety of, of their her needs, the needs. It wasn't. She's not looking to buy a home, but maybe she's looking for an investment, or she's not looking for herself, but maybe for a friend. Like there's so exactly. many reasons than just that one reason. That's right. But not a yes or no. Is it Monday or Tuesday? Or, you know. Good. I'm glad you caught that. One of the things that 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 you want to make sure not to do is to say stuff like, "Well, would would you like to get together to talk more about that?" Um, I'm interested. See, if you if you ask them things, there. I wasn't planning to do this, but I'm going to do it right now anyway. There's only five ways in the English language you can ask for an appointment. Five. That's it. So let me show you. They are. What time? Which time? I don't know what's going on out there. How soon? When? And number five is where. That's it. What time, which time, how soon, when, or where. If you say something other than that, you are not asking for an appointment. If you say to somebody, well, watch this. If I said, um, can we get together? So, Jennifer, can we get together tomorrow? What? If I say, can we get together? Now, we're going to have a brief discussion on language for a second here. If I say, can we get together? If you were to distill that down to just the root of what it's asking, what really is that question? Yes, it is. Well, but it's whoa. Well, you're giving them an the option, and if you give somebody an option, most likely they're going to say no. Okay, but 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 really analyze the question for a minute. Can we get together? It, yes, it is a yes or no question, but that's not really what it's asking. What is it asking? Like, do you want to? I feel like it's more uncertain of yourself, too. For sure, it's uncertain. It's kind of if they want to, but there's even it's even more than that. Can we get together? Well, technically, what you does, can. Thank you. That's where I'm going. Because are we going? To? Can we get together? Is really asking what? Right. If it's possible. Is it? But so you guys tell me, is it possible? Yes. Always. It's always possible, right? So if you say to somebody, can we get together? What you're really asking them about is, is it possible? Okay. And you guys tell me, is it possible? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So then what, what really should we be asking? When, where, why? Yeah, what time, which time, how soon, when, or where? Okay, let me ask you this one. Let's look at this one. Would you like to get together? I hear agents say that a lot. Would you like to get together? If I say to you, would you like to get together, That's Rebecca? That's the one with the option that I just was saying, right? Well, well, what am I really asking? If you really look at the, analyze the question, would you like to get together? What am I asking? If they would like it. If they would like it. <laughs> now, let me ask you a question. Do you like going to the dentist? No. But do you go? Why? If you have a toothache, you definitely want to go. So yeah. if the person's interested in buying a home, if they're interested Thank in something, you. they're like, yeah. I they might not to. like to, but they might have to, right? 
So if I ask, would you like to, they might not like to. So would you like to is not asking for an appointment either. There's only five ways. What time, which time, have? Now watch how, watch this. Watch how discreet this is. Aren't you glad you sat on the front row? <laughs> right? Why don't you give me some money? Why don't I give you some money? Yeah. I don't know you. <laughs> okay, my children are going to No. Okay. Why don't you give me some money? Okay. Why don't you give me some money? I don't trust you. Okay. Why don't you give me some money? I don't have any. Okay. Why don't you give me some money? I don't have any. Okay. Why don't you give me some money? 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 I want the other one first. Oh, okay. I'm working. <laughs> How much money did I just get? No money. Why? What did I? Why did I not get any money? Didn't give me anything. Yes. Yeah, no reason. Well, look at the question I asked. See, he, here's the way your brain works. The way that our brain works is like a computer. It is going to respond according to the information given. So watch this. Let me show you. I'm going to give you another example, and then we'll finish up the other. If I wanted to know what was going on a mile down the road, should I ask a giraffe or a turtle? Giraffe. Giraffe. Okay. What do the rest of you think? Giraffe or a turtle? Now, remember what we're talking about is how the brain works. Right. So, so, okay, why are turtles? Because they'll take their time. Oh, okay, they're going to take their time. Okay. Now, how does the brain work? It res it, yeah, well, like a computer, it responds according to the information given. Why did you guys respond either giraffe or turtle? Giraffe. Okay, but for real... If you wanted to know what was going on a mile down the road, and you asked a giraffe or a turtle, what's going to happen? For real. They're going to help you. So why did you guys not respond with, I don't talk to animals and expect them to be able to tell me what is going on a mile down the road? Because we come in the fantastical sense. Because the way that your brain works is like a computer. It responds according to the information that's given. The information I gave you is if you had to know what or you wanted to know, who would you ask, a giraffe or a turtle? Notice that none of you said, why would you ask a giraffe or a turtle? They're not going to be able to tell you. See, the, the way that our brain works is like a computer. It responds according to the information given. So when I said to you, why don't you give me some money, what did you guys tell me, every one of you? No. You told me the reason you weren't going to give me any money. Now, for most of you, surprisingly, generally when I teach this, I would say that the way I respond to that is usually that almost every one of you lied to me, too. But some of you guys didn't lie because you said, like, I don't want to, and which was probably the truth. But usually I get the things of, well, I don't have any. Because, so, yeah, you said you don't have any. Oh, yeah, see, he left out the on me part earlier. He said, I don't have any. See, what, hence, what tends to happen is you will get a response according to the question you ask. So if I say to somebody, hey, would you like to get together? They probably wouldn't like to because they don't know if they trust you at this point anyway, so they're going to say no. But if you give people options just the way I did with you, should you ask a giraffe or a turtle, you got every one of you selected one of the two. So if I said to you, which is better, afternoons or evenings, what are they typically going to respond with? Yeah. Now, I'm not saying they aren't going to say no, because they still will, but you are less likely to get the no by saying which works better for you, afternoons or evenings, which is really another way of saying what? Which time is better for you? So there's only five ways in the English language you can ask for an appointment. It's what time, which time, how soon, when, or where. If you say anything else besides that, you are not asking for an appointment, and the number of appointments you're going to get is going to go way down. If you're saying to people, can we get together? Is there a time we can get together? Would you like to get together? Now, I do want to, though, be very, very clear. Like, if you are saying something else and it's working, that's fine. The issue isn't if it's working. It's when it's not working. I had an agent one time in this training say to me, Hey, Russ, I say, can we get together all the time? And I get plenty of appointments. To which my response, if you challenge me with that, I would say, Brandon, good for you. Keep doing it. That's what I said to her. Great. If your business is where you want it to be, 
and you're saying, can we get together? Don't change a thing. But if you want to change and get more appointments, then you should change what you're saying. Now, after the class, I went and looked up her production. She had closed two deals in the last year. I was like, wow, I guess her business, she was killing it. <laughs> like So I, I decided from then on I would come in and teach. If you want to do two transactions a year, you should say, can don't use this because you'll get more than that. So if you only want two, you should say, can we get together? Because it works great for two, two transactions a year. All right, questions? All right, next thing that I want to get to, I'm taking way too long today, but the good news is it's a four-hour class, so we'll do the other two hours Thursday. Okay, next thing I want to hit on with you is this. When you are prospecting, and you guys may have started to even pick up on a little bit of this already, but what is the difference? Because sometimes, at, some of the stuff we're going to start to talk about now, sometimes what happens is people will feel like, as I start to teach you some of this stuff, sometimes people will feel like, man, it almost feels like we're manipulating people. So let me ask you a question. What would be the difference between manipulation and persuasion? Intent. Good. Did you, did you hear that before already? Mm -hmm. No. Who? Where? Uh, I feel like it was either Chris Ferguson. Oh, did he? Yeah, good. in a morning meeting. Good. That's great. I'm glad. Morning meeting. Good. Yeah. The difference between persuasion and manipulation is going to be the intent. So say more about that. What, do, what does that mean? So it should be the intent behind the person doing it, the manipulating or the intent or the persuading. So if I'm persuading you to do something that's in your best interest and it's persuasion, but if I'm like, I want this for myself, and it's not going to be in your best interest, then I'm manipulating you. Good, perfect. So the skills that we would use to get appointments would be the same that a con artist would use to take advantage of somebody, but the difference is going to be, and I want to be really, really clear on this, the difference has got to be your intention, and what does your intention have to be? Good. To help them. Yeah, to help them. At the end of the day, that's what I... Keep in mind, so when I say to, when I was telling you guys about, hey, with Brandon and he's six months out, and, and in a way, you might have thought at a subconscious level, well, that's a little bit manipulative to get him to come in for an appointment, when in reality, he'll probably end up buying the house or sooner. Like, I'm, it might be perceived like that it's a little manipulative, but at the end of the day, remember what I said, I really, that working on two parallel tracks here, I really am okay with whenever he does it. It doesn't matter to me, like honestly. So my intention really is to help him. Because is it possible that is that that something is in his best interest? Well, you brought up the housing prices going up or potentially interest rates. Could it be better for somebody to buy today rather than waiting a year because of that? Yeah. For sure. So my intention is not ever to hey, I just want to get a paycheck, like at the end of the day, my intention, and I want to be really, really clear on this because yours has to be, your intention has got to be about helping people get what is in their best interest. And 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 here's the other thing. Um, Thoreau said, who you are speaks so loudly that people can't hear what you're saying. Meaning, your intentions are going to come through because it doesn't matter what words you use, they can feel it. So your intention has got to be about, I want to help people get what it is they want and to help them in a way that is going to be in their best interest. So when I say manipulation and persuasion, the difference is the intention. Your intention's got to be to help. Right? It's the same way for like the, the buyers or sellers too. What they're saying is different than their intention. Sometimes they don't know yes. what they need. Because um, I'd like... I've gone back through and looked at people I've closed that are actually good friends of mine, and like my notes are like hung up on me, like not ready. I'm like, oh my gosh, like I forgot that they even, you know, yeah. like all that. If you're paying attention to all that, then thank you. Let it go. Yeah, yeah. you're because you're exactly right. That is so. That's love it. Well, sometimes I think you're educating them too, more so than manipulating them. Like you know, my parents back in 2000, you know, eight when the housing crisis, you know, they had money sitting in the bank, you know, drawing one percent interest. And you know, and it took a little while to educate my mom to invest in real estate. You know, and finally, I, I found a way to think of those homes as the bank rather than you know just right. a different building that's the bank. You know, and it doubled their income. And so, yeah. you know, it's just it's educating them too as to yeah. How to which thank you because that's back to what I was saying here. Have you considered which 
you should be using that with people who say, like, if you're just out knocking on doors and she was to say, no, we love our house. We never want to move. Well, that's awesome. Have you considered how you could use real estate to build your financial future? Because you're exactly right. Can it be a good thing to invest in real estate? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So we have an agent at this office. You won't see him for a few months, but you you know um, Phil, right? So one of the agents we have at this office, he has, over the last 10 years, he went from basically nothing 10 years ago to today. He owns enough investment properties. He has passive income. I hope he doesn't care if I tell this, but he's got passive income coming in at basically $23,000 a month. So July or August, when did he leave? July or August of last year, he went and bought a motorhome. He pulled his kids out of school. He's got four kids, if I remember right. Is that right? And put, the oldest is like 12. Pulled them out of school. They're in an RV today, driving the country. And he's like taking them to the history sites, showing them history. And he can afford to do that because he's bought investment properties, paid them off. He's got $23,000 a month of passive income coming in because he was smart in buying properties. So, like, you're... If, when I say, if you considered buying real estate, like, I'm not, like, trying to hurt her. I'm not trying to do, like, at the end of the day, would it help you if you had $23,000 a month of passive income coming in? Absolutely. Like, you would, would you be mad at me for, that dang Russ taught me how to have $23,000 a month of passive income. Like, meaning how that's what, what? How dare you? Yeah, how dare you do that? <laughs> like, meaning, like, if, if there were, if that's what your intention is, is like, I want to help people have a better life. And and that's when we, so when we talk about this, so as we go through and start to talk about some of these things, keep in mind, your intention's got to be good. Because otherwise, you'll start to feel, if you ever find yourself going, this almost feels like we're manipulating them. You got to stop yourself and go, yeah, but that's not, because my guess would be, none of you got into real estate because you wanted to go take advantage of people and like, right? It was, for real, like, why did you decide real estate? Yeah, to help people. And, yeah, granted, I mean, at the end of the day, if you didn't get paid for it, you probably wouldn't do it. So, like, we have to get, make some money off of it. But part of what gets exciting is helping. The reason I, remember I told you I started doing this training with no intention to keep doing it, and 15 years later I'm still standing up here, and I told you, like, it's because I enjoy it and it's fun. Like, the reason it's fun for me is I love having you sit in the class and then watch your success take off. To me, that's why I do it. So the reason my intention for being here is to help you. So it's the same thing. It's about helping people get what it is they want. Okay. So your intention's got to be pure. And your the other thing is, is you have to have a belief that you can help people. So that's the next piece of this. So your intention's got to be to help people. The next thing is, is you got to believe that you can. Meaning, we already talked a little bit about, usually what holds a lot of agents back is, is the fear of well, what if they say yes and I don't know enough, so may, maybe I'll wait to prospect because I don't know enough yet. Like, you just have to believe and know that you're with a company that will help you. Like, if you come across, hey, I got an appointment, here's what I always say. If you're not sure what to do, you can call me. So, but, but. Give at least give it some time. Like meaning, like so for Rebecca, if you go knock on somebody's door today and they go, Yeah, come listen to my house, come back in an hour, like I can't guarantee you I'm gonna be able to help. Like if you'd have called me an hour ago, I'm in here, like I wouldn't have called you back. Yeah. So I always just say like schedule it for like twenty four hours later at or forty eight, but somewhere in like just give enough time because even like, so I'm here this week, but next week I'm going to be teaching these exact same classes at our California offices all week. And so if I'm down there, I'm in class from 9 until 4. So I'll call you back, but it might not be till 5 o'clock their time, which is 6 o'clock here. So, but just know we've got at this office, Rick Bentley, Ruby, Chris, Jason, Rob Oakey, Jeremy Lee. I mean, there's six brokers here that are could help you, not to mention plenty of other team leaders or whatever that are around. So we're all happy to do it. Yeah. Do like every time. Yeah. yeah. So don't stress about what if I get an appointment? We'll help you through it. Okay? Alright. So you gotta believe you can do it, or you gotta have the right intention, you gotta believe you can do it. 
Now, with that being said, so now I want to start to, in the last few minutes that we have here before we wrap up for today, I want to go through and talk about, essentially, when you are prospecting, there are three things that have to happen in order for you to get an appointment. Because remember, what we talked about, your job is you got to present, or you prospect, you got to do lead follow-up, you got to present, and actually I should have given you number four, we got to close, which, and there's only five ways that you can close, right? So, okay. So, let me kind of actually tell you what we're going to do. So, for the rest of the time today, what we're going to talk about is just getting appointments. But then on Thursday, what I'm going to do is we're going to make a list up here of every way you can, every possible way to prospect, and then I'm going to walk you through how to do it in each of those areas, what to do to be successful at. So the idea for me is today is more of like what to say, and tomorrow or Thursday is going to be how to, to do it. Does that make sense? So, okay. So anytime you are prospecting, anytime, or even presenting. If you go on a presentation, it's the same thing. There's three things that have to happen. You have to connect, you have to create value, and you have to close. You gotta connect, you gotta create value, and you have to close. So if I knock on somebody's door, so let me come back to Karina here. So if I knocked on her door, the first thing that I have to do is I've gotta connect with her. So when I say connect, that doesn't connect is not the same thing as relate. Usually when we're trying to relate to somebody, what are we looking for? Similarities. Yeah, similarities or something in common. And typically what happens when you try to relate to somebody, typically it looks like this. What what is a hobby or something you enjoy doing? The gym. The gym. Yeah. Okay. So let's say that I'm enjoy working out as well, and I find out she likes that, what are we going to talk about? Yeah. yeah, and if you really actually stop and look at relating to people, what we usually really do is we try to one-up them, is usually what happens. So she'll tell me she likes to work out, oh, well, have you ever done this? Or do you, do, have, do you, do you like to do that? Or let me tell you what I do. Like, who do we usually turn it into a being about? Ourselves. Ourselves. So we want to relate, but then we want to turn it from, oh, well, yeah, well, now now that I know that you're interested in that, let me tell you about how great I am. And I, I'm being a little over the top on this. Yeah, but that's how people generally are. But that's how, yeah, that's exactly right. See, so a connection is not the same thing. Because did in our conversation, did I try to relate to her? No. Yeah. When you try to relate, we try to make it about us. If I want to connect... We try to make it about them. See, if you want people to feel good and you want people to like you, be interested in them. Ask a lot of questions about them. Like, So even if you find yourself wanting to be like, oh, well, let me tell you about this. Don't. Because I hate to say it, but they don't care. You know what I mean? Like really at the end of the day, who do, who do we all care about? Yeah, if we're honest, we really only care about ourselves. So, like, start to pay attention to your communication or just communication in general. Like, the next time you go to a lunch with a group of people or dinner or something, pay attention to, like, how much are people really just talking about themselves and how much is it that they're just being curious. Now, let me give you a quick story on that. So, I was down in Vegas. This is about probably three years ago now. I'm down in Vegas at a convention or a seminar. And at the seminar, the guy that was doing the seminar was standing out there and he was talking about it. And he, he actually challenged everyone to, he said, play the question game. Like, when somebody asks you a question, answer their question with a question. And so after, the, after that uh, seminar was over that day, uh, Jason Carlson, who's one of the brokers here, um, he and I were going to dinner and we were going with, so in case you guys don't know, the reason I was saying I'll be in California next week. So... Uh, John and George, who are the owners here of Century 21, they bought three years ago a franchise in, um, or a real estate company that in California. That So they now own here, but they also own some offices there. So I do the training for both, so I'm back and forth. But um, the first time we met some of the managers was down at this convention or seminar in Vegas. 
And so after we had got done with the class the day that the guy was talking about asking these questions, we were going to dinner with some of the managers from down in California. And I had said to Jason Carlson, okay, at this dinner tonight, we're not going to talk about ourselves at all. We're only going to ask questions about them. And, and I said, so if they ask us a question, like answer their question. If they ask it, don't be rude. Answer, let's answer the question, but immediately turn it back to them. So we're at the dinner, and across from us was this husband and wife that co-managed this office. And so we're asking, oh, so which office are you in? And the area, it, and you, it, you may or may not be familiar with it. I've never heard of it before, but it was called Ojai. Okay, ever, did you really? Okay. So they were talking about Ojai. And I'm like, I've never even heard of it. I don't know anything about which. So I've got a funny story because I have been there now. But but she says, oh, yeah, we live in Ojai. And she was telling me, like, it's considered kind of the spiritual place. And there's a bunch of movie stars. and things. like. So I'm just asking question after question. She's saying, like, Ellen DeGeneres has a house there. And she's like, it's not uncommon to be at the grocery store and to see Ellen or whatever. And we're just question after question after question after question after question. And at the end of the dinner, she stands up and she's like, Thank you. That was the most enjoyable conversation that I have had at dinner for a long, long time. Now, why? Because it's all about her. Because it was, yeah, the whole time was just question about her, question about the area. Tell us about this. Tell us about that. Like, if you want people to feel connected to you, you ask them questions about them. And as long as you... What's that? That's all a therapist does. Yeah, essentially. Yeah, thank you. That's a very good point. They sit and just, they don't go, oh, well, let me tell you what I do, you know. So if you want to connect with people, you've got to do that. So funny story with that. So I'm down there training. So because it's in Ventura or Simi. I'm always training either in Ventura or Simi Valley. So I'm in Ventura training. And I'm like, I need, I was telling this story. And I'm like, I got to go to Ojai. And so I'm like, how long is it going to take me to drive there? And they're like, this time of day, probably, I don't know, 30 minutes or so. And I'm like, okay, I'm going. So class gets over. This won't mean anything to you guys. But I jump in the car. I drive to Ojai. I get there. And I pull up. And I'm like, because I'm like excited because I've heard how awesome this is. And I pull up and I'm like, kind of looks like Camus or Park City. I mean, I was kind of like, eh. Because for us here, like we're up in the mountains all the time. And so it wasn't, I mean, I was kind of like, eh. So the next day I go to class and I'm like, okay. I, I didn't want to tell them that I was like, eh, it was all right. Like, it's, so which uh, don't be offended no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm realizing because I'm realizing like the reason it's cool is because like for California like that's pretty mountainous I mean it's kind of the woods I or think whatever. I know what you're talking about no it's nothing special for you for, for like, yeah yeah you know, thank you well, yeah and so it's just a lifestyle but too yeah and yeah like for sure from so, when you work in Los Angeles yeah in yeah because it's yeah much yes yeah. So I go to class the next day, though, and I'm like, so they're like, did you go? I'm like, yeah, it was cool. Like, I was totally, like, trying, because I, what I didn't want to do is offend anybody to be like, eh, it was fine. Like, but I was like, no, it was great. Yeah, it was way cool. And, and one lady goes, hey, I realized after, right after class was over and you left, I realized he's probably not going to think it's that cool because, in, like, in Utah, he's up in, they've got the mountains and stuff all and I was like, well, I wasn't going to tell you, but yes, that's true. So anyway, it's, but it still is a cool area, so I don't want to take that away. But, but here's the point. If you want to connect with people, you ask them questions about them. So notice, what was I asking? How long have you lived here? Where did you move from? What brought you here? If, like every question was about them. Now, it is okay, and I would highly recommend. So all of those questions that I was asking her, we have in the script book that we have for you guys. It's basically the, the just listed or the just sold script is all I was following. which So we've got the script for you. But you need to be able to, to drill down a little bit further. So like, let me show you what I mean. So where did you move from? Lehigh. Oh, Lehigh, really? So wh where on Lehigh did you live? See, now notice I'm just taking that question and I'm going to go two or three more questions deeper. So what part of Lehigh? Um, near State Street. Oh, really? Okay, so how long did you live there? Um, 19 years. For 19? 19. Wow, that's awesome. So what was it that brought you here? See, now I'm just going to the next question. So what what made you move here? I got married, and my husband's father was a real estate agent, so we started renting one of his homes. Oh, you're kidding. So uh, what's his name? John Putman. Oh, hmm. how long has he been in this? See, I can go off and ask a few more questions, 
that it's off the script. Oh, really? Because especially if she's bringing up somebody from real estate, which, by the way, what is she telling me? She knows the agent. <laughs> yeah, and it's her husband's dad, right? So, like, what are the chances she's listing her house with me? But here's what I have found, though. I wouldn't discount that, especially because of where I went with it when I said, well, what have you done in terms of investing in real estate? Well, not much. Well, is that something you'd be interested in? Yeah. They'll probably, st even though he's an agent, because here's the thing. He's not living anymore. So. Oh, well, then I don't have to worry. <laughs> Well, so, but I, and so I may have found that out if I kept asking questions. Oh, really? Well, what company is he with? And then she would have said, oh, well, he's passed away now. Oh, okay. Well, now I can have a deal again. Like, but notice though, everything that I'm doing, have I said really anything about me? No. All I'm trying to do is connect. And the way you do it is by asking questions that are about them. Okay. So you've got to connect. Once we have connected, then the next thing I've got to do is create value. So how did I create value with her? Because she was saying, I don't want to move. We've lived here. We're happy, blah, blah, blah. That's right. So the way I created value was by saying, well, how are you using real estate to plan for a financial future? Well, we're really not. Was well, it something you'd be interested in? Eh, I don't know. Okay, well, by her going, eh, I don't know, tells me what? Well, there's no value, really, by going, eh. So i got to create some value, which is why then you can start to say, you know, I mean, would you be interested in having some passive income of a couple thousand dollars a month? All of a sudden now, hopefully, I'm starting to have them go, oh, maybe this guy knows something that would help me. Does that make sense? So think of it another way of this, at least create value, is you've got to make people be curious. That's another way I like to say it. There's a great book that I would recommend that you read. It's called um, Question-Based Selling. And if I remember right, the author's name is Thomas Fries, F-R-E-E-S-E, -E -E, but it's Question-Based Selling. Great, great book. In that book, though, that's where I got the, this, you make them curious. So we say it as create value, but think of it another way is you got to make people curious. See, if people are curious, they'll set an appointment with you. If they're not, they won't. So i got to get them to be curious, or I've got to create value. I've got to create some type of value that they can see there's going to be value in me. So another way that I do it is what I did with Brandon earlier. Well, hey, when, when the time does come, do you want to be over-prepared or under? Well, yeah, I'd rather be over-prepared. Oh, well, then great. we got to get together and talk about it. Hopefully, I'm creating some value there for him. See, stop and analyze like, like every phone call you ever make. At the end of the call, you should ask yourself, or if you go door knocking, did I connect? Did I create value? And did I close? Like you should stop after every contact you make in this business and analyze. Did I connect? Because here's what I will promise you. If you connect and create value and close, you'll get an appointment every time. And so said another way, I'm going to pick on you for a minute. You said out of 100, maybe one, that means 99 times, don't be offended, you didn't either connect or create value or you didn't close. When you say close, you mean, you mean set an appointment? Or yep, set what time, which time, how soon, when, or where. Because if you create, connect with them and you create value and you close, you'll get an appointment every single time. Every time. 100 out of 100. You want me to prove it to you? Who wants, I want somebody to role play with me and be like, do not set an appointment with me unless I create value. So you don't need to buy, you don't need to sell, you don't want investment properties. Who wants to who wants to do it? All right. You do no, you okay. do not set an appointment with me unless there's value. Okay. So like I don't care what if, okay. if if there's value, set an appointment. But if there's no value, you don't but be like I don't need to sell. I don't want to buy, I don't want to sell. Okay. So so I'll do it like it's an internet. Okay. So ring ring. Hello. Hey, is this Brandon? Yeah. Brandon, Russ Orchard, Century 21. How are you doing? I'm um, good. How are you? Great. Hey, the reason for my call was I noticed you were on my website, and I just wanted to get an idea of what you were looking for. Um, yeah, we're not really. We just got on to look. We're not really looking for anything right now. So you just got on to look. You're not really looking for anything right now? Yeah, I'm not looking to buy. Okay. Hey, perfect. Well, you know, I come across some really good deals a lot of times before they even hit the market. Now, what am I trying to do? Great, Great. Great. But don't, don't give in to this one. 
Okay. So uh, I come across some pretty good deals. A lot of times, actually, before they hit the market, I can help my clients get some really good deals. So give me an idea of what you're looking for. Okay. Um, you know, we don't really, we're not really ready right now. We don't really know yet. So you're still not really sure yet, trying yeah. to figure it out? Okay, yeah. it sounds like, you know, I, I can appreciate that. I can understand where you're coming from. Let me ask you, though, when you do get ready, what will you be looking for? Um, probably a three or four bedroom at least two bathrooms and a three-car garage. So three or four bedrooms, two baths, and some garage. God, you know, I think I know of one that could work for you, Brandon. What would work better for you? Now, what am I doing? I'm trying to create some value and close at the same time. I think I know of some. Don't give in. I think I know of some that uh, would work for you. Would uh, afternoons or evenings be better to go look at it? Uh, I'd have to talk to my wife and get back to it. I don't really know. Okay, no worries. You know, and my schedule fills up quick, so let's just pencil it in. You can still talk to your wife, but let's just pencil it in. Okay. Don't give in. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, so, uh, what else could I try to create some value? I mean, honestly, I felt like you created a little value. I know. That's why I had to keep telling you, don't give in. <laughs> All right, how about this then? So, I still haven't gotten an appointment with it. So, Brandon, you know, one of the things I like to do is just, you know, I work with my clients at their pace. So like, it sounds like you're not, you know, you're just in the early stages, it sounds like, right? Okay. Yeah. So, um, when, when the time comes, though, would you rather be over-prepared or under-prepared? Over-prepared. Over, right? Yeah. Well, so what we need to do is just sit, sit down, spend 20, 30 minutes. I'll walk you through the process of what we need to do to get you prepared so you'll be over-prepared. So that when the time comes, man, I'm going to help you find a really good deal. So what works better for you, afternoons or evenings? Uh, don't give in. <laughs> no, don't hang up yet. <laughs> um, evenings are usually better. No, don't give in. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you can value. Yeah, I can. I know, but I'm just, I'm, I'm wanting to show you guys something. Um, Let's say that still isn't valid. Okay, so. Yeah, I'm just, I'm really, we're just really not ready for us. I'm sorry. Okay, so it sounds like you're just not quite ready yet. Okay. Well, hey, gosh, that's unfortunate because typically when I sit down with somebody at the end of that meeting, I give them ten thousand dollars. <laughs> okay. So, what works better for you, afternoons or evenings? Can I say yes now? No. <laughs> <laughs> if you see value. Uh, evenings are better. Well, here's the point. Would every one of you make an appointment with me if I said that? I'm going to give you ten thousand dollars. Yeah, no strings attached. I'll just give you ten grand for coming to yes. meeting with me. Yes. Easy. Why? Get out of it. Yeah, so you know, you, when, you know when you get the calls from the timeshare people and they're like, hey, we're giving away a trip? What they're doing is this. They're creating value to get you to come in so they can close you to buy their timeshare or whatever. The, the, the whole value, hey, we're giving, we'll give you a three days and two nights or whatever in Vegas or if you'll come in and just listen to our sales pitch. All they're doing is creating value to get you to come in so that they can then close you. Does that make sense? So your job is to connect Create value and close. Now, so I'm gonna we're gonna wrap up for today right here. But on Thursday, where I'm gonna I'm gonna talk more about this connect because there's some things that I was doing that you I did it subtly. You may have caught it, Brandon. I don't know if anybody else did that. I didn't do the very first time I knocked on Karina's door. I didn't do it. But since then, every role play we've done, I've been doing. Do you did you catch what I did or didn't do? Did, did, yeah, the, so that's where we're going to start with, is we're going to talk about how do you get this connection going with people. So we're going to start with that. But then from there, we're going to run, run through, and on Thursday, what I'm going to show you guys is the buyer and seller cycle, because there's a three-phase cycle that everybody goes through before they buy or sell. And so I'm going to teach you that, which is crucial, and it's also tied to this, remember this now and future we were talking about? It's tied to that, the future piece. And because if you understand this, this three sections of this buyer and seller cycle, it will make setting appointments so much easier for you. So sound good? Yeah. That's my commercial to get you to come back. <laughs> You're creating value. Is there a way to watch? Oh, online? great question. Yes. Yeah. So online we do have available. Um, so oh, like yeah. I'm streaming live right yeah. here right now. So um, if you just go onto YouTube and go to Peak Agent Training, what? then you can get. Yeah. We're in YouTube right now. Yes, I am. You're not, but they can hear you. They can probably hear you. No, it, it'll bring up my channel, and you can go then and uh, click on the channel, and then you can find it. Okay, everyone signed in, right? Cool. Thank you for being here.
Thank we'll you. see you on Thursday, 10 o'clock, and yes. we'll uh, finish off the discussion. Thank you. You're welcome.